houses. The week before Billy disappeared, he went to Florida with Madeline Gleason, and Mary Ellen came to his house every day to take care of Harley. Mary Ellen said, I talked with Billy while he was in Florida, and he let me know that he was not having a very good time. He suspected that his girlfriend was seeing someone else. Mary Ellen said she talked with Billy again when he got home from Florida, and he was pretty upset. Mary Ellen said, Billy was the kind of man that if he got cheated on, he would take it really hard. He'd been cheated on by a former girlfriend, and it was just something he couldn't let go of. And Billy told her that he had a plan to try to get Madeline to admit this affair. So this brings us to the day that Billy disappeared. At 4.45 a.m. that morning, Billy placed a ladder up against Madeline Gleason's window, and he knocked on her second floor bedroom window. Madeline told the police department that this was just something that he did, which I found kind of weird, but whatever. She let him in, and they talked. He wanted to get back together. She didn't. And he left. I couldn't find the time that he left, but the Waterbury police say that Billy's unusual morning behavior is a sign that he might have been losing his emotional balance. But to Mary Ellen Noble, she said it was just Billy being Billy. He knocked on her window many times in the middle of the night. He wouldn't think anything. I think it's a little strange. The uh, Smolensky family agrees with her. Billy was always doing weird things like that, as Sister Paula said. The police don't know Billy the way we do. That was just Billy. The last time that Mary Ellen saw Billy, she said he was sad about how things were going with Madeline, but he seemed fine, and the two of them made plans to go to Six Flags the next weekend. The last words he said to me were, don't forget on Saturday. Don't forget, don't forget. Mary Ellen said Billy would not have committed suicide. I just know he wouldn't have done that. Something bad happened to him. Billy's neighbor told the Waterbury police that the day that he disappeared, he had asked him to watch Harley for three days because he was going up north to look at a car. The following morning, when the neighbor went to Billy's house to let Harley out, he couldn't find the house key. But this neighbor had Mary Ellen's phone number, so he called her immediately. 
Smolensky said, we repeatedly asked the Waterbury police to fingerprint his truck. But by the time we finally got someone's attention, almost ten days later, they told us it was too late. After the third day, the family followed up with the police and two detectives came and looked around Billy's house. When they heard about the problem with his girlfriend and his job situation at Midland, they inferred to the family that it might be a suicide. But Billy's family, they didn't buy it. They were then told by the Waterbury police that Billy was, as Janice recalls, just out and about. No, it's been several days. Like, no. Eventually, the police did perform luminol tests on Billy's house, garage, and truck, but they found no signs of blood. The week after Billy disappeared, the Smolenskys used the Republic American newspaper to recruit volunteers to help scour Greater Waterbury for Billy, and 200 volunteers showed up on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of Labor Day weekend that year. The search began at Billy's house and fanned out from there. Even a psychic called the family to say that Billy had been hit on the head and he was bleeding along a riverbank. Now, the family was skeptical about psychics, as most people are, but volunteers scoured every inch of the Nogaduck River from Watertown to Nogaduck. They found hobo encampments and deceased deer, but no Billy. Billy's sister Paula contacted Dogs, which is Disaster Wilderness Ground Searcher, Inc., an all-volunteer search and rescue team from Canton for help. This group uses Scent Dogs for search, to, for Scent Dogs, I typed that totally wrong, to search for lost and missing persons, and they immediately agreed to help search for Billy. Dogs contacted the Waterbury Police to inform the department they would be forming a search in the South End, and the department sent two men to accompany the dogs and their handlers as they made their way through backyards and businesses. The police worked with dogs, said William Smolensky Sr., that's a tough name to say, but they didn't help with the search for Billy all over Waterbury. We had more than 100 volunteers helping out every day. Not one cop. They just didn't seem to care. Ten days after Billy's disappearance, his sister Paula went down to police headquarters and she got a little snippy about the lack of attention that the police were giving Billy's case. And she must have gotten something done because at that point a new detective was placed on the case. Sergeant Steve Nick. and he came down to Billy's house to have a look around. Within 15 minutes, he came back to the house, back in the house, with Billy's truck keys and his wallet. He'd found them hidden underneath the driver's seat in Billy's truck, and this really just cemented to the family. Billy was in big trouble. I mean, who goes out of town and doesn't take their wallet? I found it odd enough that he didn't take his truck, but... Okay. So we're gonna backtrack a little so I can tell you about Madeline, his ex... recent ex-girlfriend... girlfriend. So Billy met Madeline several years prior when they both drove to school buses in Woodbridge. According to Billy's family, the two of them started dating in the summer of 2003, about one year before Billy went missing. Billy first brought Madeline around his family at a birthday party for his nephew. He kind of surprised them because he really had not told his family how old she was. They were kind of surprised when they met her and uh, she appeared to be Billy's mother's age. The age difference between Billy and Madeline was 16 years. As the Smolenskys heard more and more about her, they were kind of concerned for Billy's future. She'd been married and divorced three times. She had five children and uh, she was a school bus driver. 
started hanging posters near the Beecher School entrance. The superintendent of schools drove by and asked her what she was doing, and she explained, My son is missing. This woman was very nice. She asked, um, said she would appreciate it if they didn't hang it on that pole anymore, and so Janice never put one there again. Two weeks after this, Woodbridge police called and asked Janice to come down to the station. Madeline's friend Frances had filed a complaint against Janice for hanging posters by the school. Janice was arrested for first-degree harassment. It was so backwards, said Paula. The police tried to make us seem crazy, but we're just trying to find Billy. The only arrest so far in this case has been my mom. She just wants to know what happened to her son, and she ends up sitting next to criminals in the New Haven courthouse. These charges were eventually dismissed, but the event, event left Bill Smolensky rattled, Billy's dad. This shakes my belief in the system, he said. We just want the truth, and we're not getting the truth. Janice is very proactive in Billy's case. She has spent hours searching the internet looking for information that might help solve the mystery of Billy's disappearance. She's learned a lot about DNA, and it was on the internet that she learned about the FBI's Laboratory Combined DNA Index System, or you may have heard me refer to it as CODIS. She discovered how CODIS blends forensic science and computer technology into an effective tool for solving violent crimes. CODIS, according to its website, enables federal, state, and local crime labs to exchange and compare DNA profiles electronically, thereby linking crimes to each other and to convicted offenders. After Billy disappeared, the Waterbury police took his razor and his hairbrush to collect his DNA samples. They also took blood samples from Janice and Bill Sr. After learning more about DNA, Janice called the police department to find out if Billy's DNA was in CODIS. She said she was transferred from person to person and no one could answer her question. Finally, she was able to get in contact with a woman named Cindy Lopez, a former Waterbury police officer who now works at the state police forensic lab. When I finally got a hold of her, she said Billy's DNA was not registered in CODIS and she wanted to know why. None of the officers could answer her question about Billy's DNA, and neither of the detectives on his case actually knew what CODIS was. Uh, apparently, one of the detectives then called back the following day to say that they were going to swab the inside of Janice and Bill's cheeks and send their DNA off to the state lab. This detective said he was not an expert on DNA, and he placed a sergeant, Joe Rainwan, on the phone to help explain this technology. This sergeant said we're going to do a swab on the parents and send it to the state lab for what's called a reverse paternity test. These results can be used to compare with any unidentified female remains. I'm sorry, male remains. Sergeant Rain once said the results would first be plugged into CODIS, which would scour Connecticut for any unidentified male remains. Secondly, he said the DNA from the Smolenskis would be plugged into what's called the NDIS system to see if there were a match with any unidentified males throughout the country. But Billy's case is quickly turning into a cold case. This whole case is bizarre, police chief Neil O'Leary said. Maybe some media attention might help. Right now we just don't have a lot to go on. Janice shrugged her shoulders in an interview and said the police don't know where to go because they blew it in the beginning. I hope this is an eye-opener for the police department and next time someone goes missing they take it seriously and do everything they can right away. For years, we've been trying to get someone, anyone, to listen, to pay attention. 
2006, Madeline Gleason sued Billy's family for alleged harassment and defamation of character, claiming they had falsely accused her of being involved in the case. She won, and she was awarded $52,000 in damages. In 2015, the state Supreme Court overturned the trial court's decision on First Amendment grounds. The case was remanded to trial court and later withdrawn. Also, back in 2006, the police got a tip about a man named Sean Carplunk. He was Madeline Gleason's son. They reported hearing that Sean had killed Billy because he'd beaten up Madeline. He claimed that um, himself and another man named Jason had buried Billy in one of the sites that Sean had been working at. He stated they'd dug a hole and buried Billy in a spot that concrete was poured over. Sean died from a drug, drug overdose before the police had a chance to question him. A few years later, detectives got another tip involving this Sean Carplunk. In 2008, a man named Chris, I'm sorry, a man named Chad told investigators Billy had been murdered and that he knew where the body was. He claimed his friend Sean had beaten Billy to death and that he had helped him bury the remains. Based on Chad's tip, authorities conducted searches in Seymour, Connecticut in 2008. Naugatuck State Forest in 2010, and Oxford, Connecticut in 2011. Those searches didn't turn up anything, and in 2011, Chad was charged with interfering with the police and making false statements. Authorities believe he deliberately lied to them in order to mislead this investigation. In 2013, he pled guilty to one charge of making a false statement and was sentenced to four and a half years in prison. Witnesses told police that Chad had bragged about killing Billy with Sean and said his body will never be found. Another thing I wanted to mention, in March 6th of 2009, the Smolenskys went to Hartford, Connecticut to testify at a public hearing regarding a proposed bill to establish a missing person's day in Connecticut. One of Billy's co-workers at Durable Towing, Don Breen, suggested the idea to state representative Salim Newjam, and he'd followed through. It seemed like it was going to pass, Janet said. Janice said, I was very emotional. When my husband broke down reading his comments, I looked up and two of the senators were crying. But Janice isn't stopping there. She wants the Connecticut State Legislature to pass a bill that establishes statewide procedure for dealing with missing persons. If a person goes missing, the police should immediately connect D collect DNA samples. They should start a search within 24 to 48 hours with dogs and helicopters. Police have to take a missing persons report seriously. Before Billy vanished, Janice said she was shy and she would avoid confrontation, but now she's trying to confront a system plagued with inconsistency and she wants to change the laws in Connecticut. In 2009, federal legislation known as Billy's Law was introduced to Congress to help streamline the missing persons database available to law enforcement. Billy's Law is intended to help ensure that other families won't experience delays and frustrations that the Smolenskys have gone through in the search for their missing son. Billy's family fears for his safety and they say it's uncharacteristic of him to leave without being in contact with them. Despite numerous searches over the years, no trace of Billy has ever been found. Both Chad Hansen and Sean Carplunk remain persons of interest in Billy's disappearance, but his case is still unsolved. At the time of his disappearance, Billy was described as a Caucasian male, born January 14, 1973, with brown hair and blue eyes. He stands six foot tall and weighed approximately 200 pounds. He was 31 years old at the time of his disappearance. Billy has a tattoo of a blue cross with the name Pruitt on his left forearm. A tattoo of a blue cross with an orange outline on his right shoulder. And his left ear is pierced. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of William Billy Smolenski, please contact the Waterbury Police Department at 203 5 7 4 Six nine four one, or the New Haven FBI office at two zero three seven 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 six three one one. Even the smallest detail 
she wanted to find him, not helping his family search for him. The fact that she won in that lawsuit against his family is just bananas to me. Um, I don't consider posting pictures of a missing person harassment. Like, that's not. Um, and she was following them. Like, I don't, I, I don't. Anyway, now, I'm not saying that she necessarily did something to him, but I think that maybe she had someone do something to him. Um, he went to confront this politician, this heavy up in the town person, maybe that person had some nefarious connections, and they were beating him up, and something happened, and they hid his body. Maybe they didn't mean to kill him. Maybe they didn't intend to kill him. But I do believe that he is deceased somewhere, unfortunately. I'm so sad for his parents and his family because no one had a bad word to say about this guy. Everyone had nothing but nice things to say about Billy in every interview that I read. He was just a hardworking dude who was just trying to make a life and a family with someone he loved, and if she didn't love him and didn't want to be with him, she should have let him go, and he would have found someone else to love and be with. I mean, obviously, if he thought she was cheating, he probably had some pretty sound reasoning behind that. We don't know what that is, but I do think when someone is being shady about their cell phone, talking to someone else in shower stall, that's just strange, and I could see why Billy felt the way that he did. My crazy ex, when he was talking to someone else, did the same thing. Like, he wouldn't even go use the restroom quickly and leave his phone on the couch, um, which made me suspicious. Again, I don't know why she would have gone on the trip to Florida with him if she was seeing someone else. Um, I assume that this someone else didn't know about Billy, and that's why she was, like, talking to him in the bathroom or whatever, because otherwise she could have just said, I'm on this trip with him for this amount of 